friends. Today we are going to continue our construction of our men's dress shirt. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, welcome to Friday Sewing School. I am so excited today because we have surpassed 2,000 subscribers and in fact are approaching 2,500 already. I'm just, I'm blown away by the support and that the sewing community has given me and um, I'm just honored and touched beyond belief. So it's an honor to share sewing with you. It's something that I always shared with my mom growing up. Um, it connects me to my memories of her and um, I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so supportive. So if you would like to be part of this growing community of SOAS, go ahead and click the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever I have a new video up. So we've been working on the men's shirt pattern 8753 from Simplicity. It has three views. It has the classic, which is what we're doing, or I'm doing. Um, there's also a slim cut and a modern cut. Um, the slim cut and modern cut do have back darts and they're a little more form fitting. Um, to the man's body. Um, my husband doesn't prefer that, so I'm doing the classic shirt. Um, today, we, I'm showing you how to enclose the yoke, and I'm showing you how to construct the collar. So that's uh, what we'll be doing today. And I'm gonna, So I'm gonna cut right to the tutorial camera, and I'll be back at the end. Okay, so you have interfaced everything that it calls for in the directions, and I want to point out that this um, this piece here is a buttonhole guide, but um, they do not show a piece to interface the placket, although it's referred to in the directions. So you can use this buttonhole guide piece to cut the placket for the buttons down the front. You'll need two of them. Just want to point that out because it's not clear in the directions. Okay, unless I'm totally missing something, which is possible. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and construct the yoke. Now, if you are making the slim fit or modern version, you will have darts in the back. Um, you should go ahead and construct those darts first. I'm making the classic version, so I don't have darts on mine. Um, but we've done darts in Friday Sewing School before, so that shouldn't be difficult. If you're having difficulty, uh, let me know and I can show that to you again. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take the outer yoke piece and put it down on top of the back piece, right sides together. And then you're going to take the inside yoke piece and you're going to place it right side to wrong side. So you're making a sandwich of the back piece between the two yoke pieces. And you're going to pin that. Now, if you have trouble lining them up, you can baste one to the other and then, um, and then go ahead and uh, add the other. But if you're really careful and if you have nice, crisp shirt fabric, it should be pretty easy to just uh, pin it and go ahead and sew it that way. So as you see, I'm making a yolk sandwich, <laughs> not eggs but I'm putting the back piece between the two yoke pieces. I hope you can see that well. And I'm just pinning along so that it stays nice and lined up when I'm sewing. And of course, remove pins as you sew, which I know I say every single time, but if you've ever had a needle break on a pin and had it go flying, you will not want to do that again. Okay, so I've got the two pieces pinned together, if you can see. All right, and now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna use our 5 8 seam allowance and I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this seam right here. Okay, so I've sewn my sandwich together and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to trim the seam a little bit. This is the outside. 
So what I want to do is the longest piece to be on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim from the inside and just grade these seams a little bit. I'm using duck build scissors so that I don't cut through too many layers of fabric. And just trim them, grade them so that they aren't so bulky. There's three layers, so I'm gonna trim the next piece as well, not quite as tight as the first one. Keeping things trimmed and keeping um, threads clipped goes a long way toward helping your sewing be nice and neat and um, less confusing. So um, I would highly recommend keeping things trimmed up and uh, threads clipped whenever possible. Um, it'll just help you in the long run. Have a neater project and I'm not neat by nature. Most creative people are not. But, um, it's an extra step that we sometimes want to skip um, because that's how we are built. But it's very important to keep things neat on the inside. It'll go a long way toward how long your garment lasts. So if you're working on something for a Christmas gift or um, birthday gift or something for someone else, it's extremely important to have it look really nice on the inside. All right, now I'm gonna go to my ironing board and I'm just gonna press that open and then these up like this so that we'll have our yoke. Okay, now that I have pressed the yoke piece, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna top stitch all the way across here um, for a nice neat finish on the back and that'll be on the right side. I'll take you to the sewing machine with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the seam line there um, on the yoke part. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna adjust my seam length to about three. So I like a little bit longer stitch for top stitching. And what I do is I use the inner point of my foot right here as a guide um, to do an eighth of an inch away from something. Just go nice and slow. The way to go straight is to just proceed nice and slowly and evenly. You don't wanna go start, stop, start, stop too much, but just go nice and slow and even. And just keep it flowing through. And having it well pressed before you do this is another important thing. So it's all neatly top stitched right there. You can see it looks nice and neat and even. Okay, now we're going to take our two fronts. And we're going to place them right sides together. This is the right side. Easy way is to grab the one with the pocket. Okay. I see some I see some threads I didn't clip. See what I mean? That's really important. And I miss them all the time. So we're just gonna take one layer, one yoke piece, the top yoke piece, and pin that to the front pieces. We're gonna be doing here what's called the burrito method, which is a really nifty way to enclose everything nice and neatly. Okay, that's one pinned. And I'm going to do the other front piece. I'm just using one layer of the yoke. These are the shoulder seams. 
I'll go ahead and pin that. Okay, so I have my two front pieces pinned to the top yoke piece, okay? So what you have is that other yoke piece dangling in the back here. All right, so I'm going to sew these together, my 5 8 seam allowance here and here. Okay, I've sewn the, the shoulder seams of one yoke, all right, and the other one is dangling back here. Now we're gonna do the burrito method. So what you're gonna do is you're going to roll the shirt pieces up nice and tight and close to the yoke. Just roll them up like this. So once that's rolled up, you can pull the other yoke piece out and around, and you can join these shoulder seams. So what you've got is like a burrito. You see that this is all rolled up inside there, and the two shoulder seams are here. So I'm going to do that again just so you can see. Okay, lay out your, these are the two fronts. This is the inside of the two fronts, okay? So you're gonna just roll up the shirt pieces, leaving the yoke, the uh, second yoke dangling in the back. Roll them up, the tighter you roll it, really the nicer it'll be, okay? And then you can bring this other yoke piece around and go ahead and pin that. And I have to get pins over here. But you pin these and you go ahead and sew these two shoulder seams, okay? Okay, so I've sewn my burrito, all right? I have my two shoulder seams and the shirt is rolled up inside. So now what I'm going to do is just pull that through So once you pull that through, you have a neat yoke, all enclosed. And the front, close, enclosed on the back and enclosed on the front. And now you're going to press and then top stitch right across here, just like you did uh, an eighth of an inch away, just like you did on the uh, bottom of the yoke, okay? Top stitch there and there. Top stitch there and there. Okay, so your yoke is basically constructed. You can see it's very nice and neat, top stitched. And the next thing we will be doing is putting on the collar. Uh, we're going to construct our collar today and then next week we will um, add on the button plackets, which is basically they're self-faced. So we're gonna go ahead and add those on and um, attach our collar and collar stand. But today, we're just gonna go ahead and construct the collar. So you will take your two collar pieces, you can leave the collar stand pieces uh, alone for a moment. You're gonna take your two collar pieces, put them right sides together, And then you're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch all the way around, keeping the corners nice and crisp. I'm gonna take you with me to the sewing machine because I'd like to show you a trick on how to make these corners lay nice and crisp. I'm gonna go ahead and um, sew these collar pieces together. Just gonna put a couple pins in here just to Make sure it doesn't shift on me in the middle of sewing because sometimes when you're sewing uh, something together that's long like this, things can shift on you. So you want to make sure that it doesn't. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sew these together. The interfacing should be on the outside because that's going to end up on the inside of your collar. Okay, now I'm just going to I'm going to do a stitch length of about 2.6 for this. 
I'm going to go all the way down until I get about 5 eighths of an inch away from the corner. Some of you are blessed enough to have uh, markings on your feed dogs for that. I don't. I have to guess, but I'm pretty good at guessing. All right. And then you're going to make a half pivot and hand crank one stitch. And then you're going to make the rest of the pivot and continue sewing. This will keep your collar crisp. If you have that one stitch in the corner, um, it will help it to be nice and crisp. Now we're going to go ahead and trim and press the collar. Okay, so I have sewn my collar together. And now I'm going to take my scissors again, my duckbill scissors, which are wonderful. And I'm going to go ahead and grade these seams. Now at each point, you want to clip that point to but not through, right across. And so yeah, I didn't cut through the point, just make sure you don't cut through the point there. And also on these sides right here, I'm just going to trim this down to have as little bulk in that corner as possible. I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to cut straight across and then trim the bulk. Okay. Now we're going to turn out our collar. You want to take your point turner. I hope you have one if you don't. Um, this is definitely not something you should not be without. Um, go ahead and just make that point nice and crisp. Because we took that stitch in there, see how nice and crisp we can get that point. And we're going to do the same on this side. See how nice and crisp that point is? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press this nice and flat. Okay, my collar is nice and neat and constructed. And okay, so now I'm gonna top stitch just close to the edge all the way around this collar. Now there is another piece in the pattern that is a um, piece that holds collar stays. My husband doesn't like them, so I never use that piece. However, this would be the point where you'd want to go ahead and construct and attach that piece if you decide to do that. I find with the shirt tailor interfacing, the collars stay nice and crisp for me and I don't need to do that. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that top stitching and then um, we will be done for today. All right, so I have my top stitching done. I have a beautiful collar ready to attach. Next week, we are going to go ahead and construct the collar stand. And then we're going to take our body of our shirt and we're gonna go ahead and put in the um, interfacing for the button placket and construct that. And then we're going to attach our collar and collar stand to the body of the shirt. So we have finally gotten to the point where it's starting to look like a shirt. Um, in the weeks to come, we'll be finishing it and you'll have a wonderful holiday gift for that special someone or perhaps you're doing a ladies pattern and you're following along in construction and it's for yourself and you'll have it to wear for the holidays then. 
But if you're a new subscriber, then maybe you've picked this up and maybe you haven't. Fridays are all about sewing skills and basic sewing skills. If you start at the beginning of the Friday Sewing School playlist and go all the way through, you will have covered all the way up to the point where we're actually making a man's shirt. So go ahead and um, follow that along if you need to. Um, but all the skills are there um, if you watch the, the, all the videos from the beginning till now. Um, and we're going to be building on those skills as we go. We did, we did start with a list of 50 skills, and I think we've covered more than half of it by now. So we're rolling right along. On Tuesdays, um, it's more chatty, I guess. Um, it's kind of whatever is um, trendy and current at the time. There are, um, I also do talk about fit. I talk about um, your personal style. Um, we, sometimes we do shop and sew where I go and I... Um, go out to the stores and see what's in trend and then find some patterns to match up with that for you. Um, but basically, Tuesdays is more the current, what's on our minds right now, and Friday is sewing school. Next um, Tuesday is our great cardigan wrap up. And this is something I'm trying this year. What I'm doing is I am reviewing four, probably four cardigans maybe five. It depends on how much I get done this weekend. Um, but I'm reviewing at least four or five cardigans. And I'm also creating a playlist from other vloggers who have reviewed cardigans. You should be able to watch this playlist and um, get a review on all the cardigans out there. Well, there's many, 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 many. So I'm sure we won't cover them all, but you should have a pretty good idea of what's out there by the time you watch all the videos. So uh, if this goes over well this year, then next year maybe I'll turn it into a challenge and um, we'll recruit some prizes maybe from some of the uh, pattern companies or something like that. But for now, this year, we're just gonna go ahead and share the playlist of cardigans. So um, let me know if you think that you would like it to be a challenge next year, and then we'll kind of plan forth with that. All right, so Tuesday, I will see you about the cardigan wrap up. And Coming up is Thanksgiving, and I will be traveling over the holidays, but I am recording some episodes ahead so that you'll be covered while I'm gone. And um, you'll be watching my face while I'm stuffing my face with turkey. But anyway, though I won't be actually here behind the camera, I will have um, episodes recorded for you. Also coming up is uh, Christmas. Believe it or not, it's like six weeks away, I think, something like that. Crazy. I don't know how it could be that, uh, that time of year already. Starting December 1st, I will be sharing a holiday sewing idea with you every single day until the, uh, Christmas Eve gets here. So if you're looking for things to sew for your family, ideas, um, there'll be some decorating ideas, there'll be some kids ideas, there'll be some ideas for what you can wear for the holidays. Um, lots and lots of fun ideas coming up. So be sure and stay tuned for that as well. Have a wonderful weekend. I don't have a whole lot planned. I plan to be right here in my sewing room. Um, the Buckeyes are on tomorrow, so you know where I'll be at noon tomorrow. But otherwise, I'll be here in my sewing room and looking forward to a weekend of just uh, sewing and relaxing. So have a wonderful weekend. I will see you next week on Tuesday. Happy sewing.